Honestly, that's we send a lot of text messages. No, but I'm, what, what I guess that's a clumsy way of asking that question. You're certainly capable of engaging in a conversation with Paul that's not about anything for Timothy, right? I mean, I would assume so. I don't. I mean, as far as memory goes, my my memory of those is not. Well, let me just we'll just see what your explanation is for this. So we're. Did you see that? I'm going to replay that without sound. There's a strong facial expression right there. This is 5785. This is June 21st of 2022. This is a week or so after that picture, and we'll get to the picture in a minute that you say that you never saw. Go ahead and read your text message to Paul. Uh, four with hot sauce that he has to eat, and he is, has allowed another four without, it says house sauce, but he has to do the hot sauce one first and then set a timer for 30 minutes before you can eat the others. What time is that set? Uh, 8.05 p.m. To the, to the second, please. Uh, 18. Okay. What's your next text message? Um, 8.05.47. 30, um, 30 seconds or so later. Yes, sir. I was using Siri because yep. I was driving. Yep. You could tell by the issues with the text message. Sure. I found enough in change to get Gabriel some chicken nuggets and french fries from Burger King. It's like three bucks total. So we will be home as soon as I do that. Do you remember sending the hot sauce text? I don't remember sending either one of these texts, sir. I don't remember sending either one of those? No, sir. I don't. But you can process that Timothy needs to eat some bread with hot sauce on it, but you scrounged up enough change to make sure that G gets some chicken nuggets and fries. We're Within on. 30 seconds. Processing that all in your mind. Sending it all out in a text message, right? Apparently, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he's serious. Let's talk about the photograph. It's people's 36A. Uh, Mr. Johnson asked you about it, so if you remembered the text exchange, including the photograph of Timothy, right? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and read the exchange there, starting with the message that Paul sent to you with the photograph. Um, Timothy tried to sneak food. I yelled at him, and then he became momentarily unresponsive, and then I saw this. He's bone thin, Mama, I think. I think we need to actually feed him. Okay. And what's your response to that? I said, Kay, give him bread, please. And then I said, I hear you give PB sandwiches and water. You want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay. The unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. Okay. And go ahead and use the next page. Uh, also, it's no wonder he's hardly capable of standing. Then that's the one with photographs of his legs, right? Yeah. And then I said, I'm in court. So was it really your testimony that you never saw that photograph? I do not recall seeing it. I, that was it. I feel like I want to throw up. I feel like I'm going to throw up. There's the concept of throwing up. So we know that's in her head here. Through all of this description so far, she has not shown any signs of horror. She saw in real life the state of that boy day after day. But the sight of his condition didn't move her then. But suddenly it's upsetting. Watch the very beginning of this next clip. The second he turns his back, her expression of feeling sick disappears from her face. You don't recall seeing the photograph, right? No, sir. The unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. You literally use the word see in your text message about see what you mean. But your testimony today is, I didn't, I didn't look at the photograph. I didn't see the photograph. Yes, sir. That's, I mean, it's a phrase that you use. It's a phrase that you use? I see what you mean? Yes, sir. Isn't that usually when you see the things that the people are talking about? Sometimes. Mm. I'm wondering why your response to your son saying that your other child is bone thin and needs to eat, actually feed him. That's the phrase. Actually feed him. Right? That's what he said, yes, sir. Right? And your response to that is, okay, give him bread, please, or bread with peanut butter. Is that right? Yes, sir. Not. Oh my goodness! It's just, if he's that hungry, yeah, make him a, make him some chicken nuggets, make him some pizza, make him some pizza rolls, make him any one of a dozen or so things that were in your freezer or your refrigerator, any of that. But that wasn't your response, was it? No, sir. I was like I said, I was in court. I just was scrambling for an answer. Again, not really her fault. Scrambling for an answer, easy. Feed him. And the point here is the use of the word actually. We have to actually feed him. They both knew what they were doing. And for Paul to dare to say this tells you it was serious. 
Even if Paul gets lots of therapy, it's going to take years of work to unravel what she did to him psychologically, if he ever unravels it at all. And he won't be able to get over the part he played in this whole thing. There's no coming back from that. You record, but you were able to send one, two, three. Did you see her lips moving there? It's like she was saying something under her breath. I'm going to replay it in slow motion. Does anyone out there know how to read lips? You were in court, but you were able to send one, two, three text messages before you said you're in court, right? Yes, sir. And the first answer you come up with to feed your child was giving bread? I don't remember what I was thinking at the time, sir. I just know that I was distracted because I was in the middle of stuff with court. But not so distracted that you can say, well, the unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. Like, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know what was going on when that was sent. I honestly don't. Mr. Johnson asked you about the hot sauce that you uh, ordered, and we saw the bottles of hot sauce. Those weren't those weren't just ordered from Meyer, were they? No. You had to special order those, didn't you? On Amazon, yes, sir. Um, I think you said the reason that you couldn't just get those from Meyer for your grocery delivery things is because they just didn't have hot sauce, right? No, they didn't have that type of hot sauce. That type of hot sauce. Yes, sir. Okay. How did you How did you conclude that that was the type of hot sauce that Timothy? How do I put this? Both loved and got to be used as a punishment. Because the the hot sauce that I had and the ones that I could access on the apps, he could, he loved those hot sauces. So, somebody explain to me how she got such high marks. She is so caught up in explaining that she has just admitted to both the act and the mental elements of one of the crimes for which she's charged. The prosecutor has gotten into her head. So you had to go out of your way to find one even hotter, one that he didn't like. Yes, sir. And the, the hot sauce started as Paul's idea? Yes, sir. How do you come up with the idea to do hot sauce if Timothy likes hot sauce? Um, well, he said that, that if he, I guess he'd read something, if I remember correctly. I don't, I mean, this, the conversation's not, I mean, it's vague at best, but, um, from what I remember, he'd said something about, he'd read something about something really hot, some new something. He's like, oh, this might be an idea to do it with a, a sauce that he doesn't like. So you tested out other hot sauces before you got to that point, and because he didn't react, you figured, let's just keep increasing the heat? Is that it? No, the, I mean, I don't remember which, I mean, how, how many I ordered, but... She stumbles over her words and then doesn't answer the question, yet she basically admits to experimenting on her son to find the most cruel thing she could. I don't know how many I ordered. She keeps displaying this weird mix of trying to avoid stating what was happening at the same time as acting as if it was all normal. I just went with something that was that was super, that was hotter than what I could get. So you tried to punish him with a lower hot sauce, but he he doesn't respond. So then you increase how hot it is. I right? didn't try with the lower because he already knew he liked the lower hot sauce. As he attacks her logic, a thing she's proud of and she wants to defend herself, she ends up admitting things. How did it even occur to you to be a punishment for him for, to find one even hotter then? How is that even a punishment if he likes hot sauce? He never liked eating the hot sauce, did he? Huh? Yes, he did. He, he, he ate spicy food. You heard, you heard Paul's testimony yesterday. I did. And you heard him say that he never wanted to eat those slices of bread with the hot sauce on it, didn't you? You heard that testimony. That's what he, I heard him say, yes. And, and, and your response to that in a lot of these text messages is make sure you use even more hot sauce than you did before, right? If that's what you say the text messages say. Oh, well, you just read the one that said he can have four, and then he can wait 30 minutes, and then he can have some without hot sauce on it. You read that one, right? Yes, sir. But again, you don't remember sending that text message. No, sir. But aliens didn't take a hold of your phone and take over your body or anything like that, did they? No, sir. No. Mr. Johnson didn't ask you, so I'll just go ahead and ask you. You used a number of other physical methods of punishing Timothy, didn't you? Define number. Yeah, okay, fine. Number is the thing she wants him to define? Not punishment or physical? Are you kidding me? Two. You made him do wall sits. Uh, one time, and that was Paul's suggestion as well. He said, oh, this this used to drive me crazy. Um, I guess he said that, Paul said that his 
dad and stepmom had used that as a punishment with him. Blame someone else. And did you hear her catch herself there? Paul says it used to drive him crazy. Then she quickly adds that Paul's father inflicted that. And I ask again, who is the parent? Why is she discussing with her son how to punish her other son? And so we decided to give it a try, and Timothy could have cared less. He what? He could not have cared less? No. So, so being made to stand as if there's no support under your legs, he was, he was okay to do that? I mean... How I, long did you have him do it for? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes? Yes, sir. When was that? I don't remember, honestly. But she remembers it was only once. And she remembers it well enough to say it was only a couple of minutes. Does anyone believe this? And running the stairs. Yes, sir. You had to do that a lot, didn't you? I wouldn't say a lot. I, it was some. In fact, there's one, there's one text exchange in here where you talk about make sure that he does it a lot, even if it's raining and cold outside, right? That's what the text says, yes, sir. That's what the text says. As if it was the text that did this thing. And Paul talks about doing it chasing style at one point, where he follow, he chases them up and down the stairs, right? Yes, sir. And the stairs we're talking about are outside. Yes, sir. They're not inside. No, they're out back. So cold, rainy. Yep, go go run the stairs outside. What what did he? Do? What was the awful crime he had done to warrant doing that? I don't remember, sir. Right in the direction of page six zero one one. Context. I wonder how it would feel to have that hot sauce on your private parts. I'm not saying touching there, not at all, but dripping a little bit there is that horrible. Did you have to ask that question? I wouldn't think so. I don't remember that. I can't even imagine saying that. Except she did say that. And she knows she said that. But you did. I know, but I can't even imagine it. About your child, right? Who at that point was in middle of an ice bath that it lasted at least two and a half hours at that point, right? What, are you asking if I said that? The distress here is not remorse. Remorse would require acknowledging the truth, and she will not. She doesn't like having to face people knowing what she did. It's not even that she doesn't want to face what she did. She doesn't want to face people knowing. When the prosecutor moves on to the ice bath, she goes back to the topic of whether or not she said that. She's had enough. I guess she doesn't like the heat. I'm asking you if you said that when your child was in an ice bath for two and a half hours at that point in time, because this is 425 in the afternoon and you're watching on the camera from work and texting with Paul about what he's supposed to be doing within, within the tub, right? I mean, if that's what was, I, I don't remember. I mean, if that's what it says, I'm not arguing that. I'm not trying to argue that. I'm just saying I don't know. It just popped in your head today. Yeah, I wonder what hot sauce on your private parts would be like. But I have no idea where it came from. No I have idea no idea. I don't remember. And I have no idea where it came from, which means it happened. It's going to be somebody else's fault or because of all her stress. I mean, she can't actually be held accountable or have to take responsibility. Good heavens. Did you ever try that hot sauce? No, I don't like food as spicy as Timothy. Mm -hmm. okay. About the hottest I can handle is um, jalapeno cheddar Cheetos. I'm, I'm with you there. I can't handle hot sauce either. So you never even, but administering it as a punishment multiple times, you thought it was okay without even trying it yourself first. Yes, sir. I have a very weak stomach. She's an explainer, eh? I have a very weak stomach. And so, completely ignoring the fact that she went out of her way to inflict pain on somebody she was supposed to protect. And so I didn't want to throw up. The concept of throwing up again, stick a pin in this in your mind. Did she throw up when she dragged her dead son out of the closet and staged the crime scene to protect herself? I didn't hear any mention of that by any witness or anything that sounded like that in the 911 call. The 911 call that was made 20 minutes after she found him. Let's talk about the ice maker for a second. Uh, People's 31 and People's 32. Yes, sir. Do you recognize that as the ice maker? Yes, sir. It's the countertop ice maker. Right. You said it makes about a cup and a half of ice? Yes, sir. Right? This is a cup and a half of ice in your mind? 
No, I've measured it. I actually used it to, um, you can get, I don't know if you've ever had a frappe from McDonald's, but uh, Walmart sells a powder mix. Storytelling. It's just blah, blah, blah to refocus and try to seem relatable. She even says, Walmart's mix is really good and only like a dollar. We're talking about what happened to her son. And that's where she goes. I'm skipping past her nonsense. I think your testimony earlier was you didn't know that ice was being used. Is that right? As far in as the what? cold baths. Not unless it was specified. I mean, there was there was there was sometimes where it said cold and sometimes where it said ice. I didn't say it, I didn't know it was being used. Okay. It was if it if it was cold, it was supposed to be just cold. So she's admitting again that the cold baths and ice baths were at her direction. The ice was only when it was specified. This prosecutor is so in her head, man, and he's just rolling with it. Well, all you would use would be the ice that was that you get out of the ice maker. You wouldn't make any more ice and put it away and no. store it up so we could have extra for the next day, would you? Not that I remember ever doing, no. Okay. Did you hear how he phrased that? Oh, you wouldn't do this, would you? Oh, no. And then, not that I remember. The pattern to her failure to remember is such that we can now translate it to, yeah, but I don't want to admit that. Page 58, 23. Remember that. Those are all your text messages. Oh, yeah, I know, but I wasn't nice tonight either. It made me feel horrible. But no way was he getting away with that crap. Um... Let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, he'll get another ice bath sometime before you leave for work and another when I get home. Um, and I said, might want to toss that, the ice that is made into some Ziploc bags in the freezer tomorrow for if we need a bunch more. You want to change your earlier answer? No, because we never did it. Not that I, I mean, you can ask Paul, you can recall him, but I don't remember ever tossing it. I would never know. The amount of ice was so small, it was almost non-existent. The ice was to cool down a hot bath. No, I don't want to change my answer because according to me, with my terrible memory, we didn't actually do that thing. And she doesn't remember doing it. And we all now know what that means. Hypothermia contributed to his death. But your suggestion to him was, hey, we need to be ready to make more ice and using the ice baths, right? That's what the text message said, but we never saved the ice. So that was your intention, was to have a backup plan if you needed to have more ice, right? That's what the text says. The text says. Not what she said, eh? The text is guilty. And that was Mark, That was June 27th. Or excuse, yes, June 27th. That was about a week before Timothy died, right? Yes, sir. And that's about two weeks after you were sent the text message with the picture that you didn't see. Yes, sir. The ice bath with you. And again, your text was, let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, He'll get another ice bath sometime before you leave for work and another when I get home. So let's let's break apart that sentence for just a moment if we can. And that was on March 27th, right? So yeah, about nine days or so before Timothy passes away. Let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, let's start there. This is at three o'clock in the morning. You're saying he is not allowed to go to sleep, right? Yes, sir. That's torture. And this takes a commitment and work from the torturers. I do not have enough bad words for this creature. So it's 3 o'clock in the morning, your 15-year-old child is not allowed to be sleeping. And if he does, he gets an ice bath, right? Yes, sir. And he'll get another ice bath, i.e. there's already been an ice bath prior to this text being sent, correct? No, sir. That, that was, it would be one and then another is what it says. Okay, well, let me read it again and make sure I, maybe I've misread it. Let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, he'll get another ice bath sometime before you leave for work and another when I get home. There's two anothers in there, isn't there? Yes, sir. The first another refers to the first ice bath. In other words, there's already been an ice bath, right? I mean, I don't know. It's I'm not questioning the, the what's in the text, but I don't know. Okay. And then sometime before he, before Paul leaves work, he'll get another ice bath, and then another one when you get home. So two ice baths, in addition to the one he's already had, right? If that's what it says. And that's for the crime of sleeping. I don't know what the, uh, the original, whatever happened before that. But you know what it was to, to get him to not do another one, right? Yes, sir. Let him know that what if he says. tries to sleep at all. That's what it says, yes, sir. She doesn't know 
what crime he committed that would warrant this. Is there any offense that would warrant this? Might want to toss the ice that is made into some Ziploc bags in the freezer tomorrow for if we need a bunch more. I think that kind of speaks for itself. We'll move on. The expression here, her arrogance, even in the face of all this, just adds to the level of disgust for her. Okay, start at page 5340. This is from May 9th. I don't think you need to read the top one. That's Paul's message. Go ahead and start reading there. From May 9th. What is daddling anyway? Um, please make sure Timothy goes into his room with the alarm on when you leave. I should be home not too long after you go, as long as you, as long as you before you go. And please let me know where you put the alarm when you leave. All right, let me stop you right there. This is May 9th. And again, you're referring to an alarm, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. This is... Okay. Go ahead. Just, I know what just, that's referring just, to. Let's keep going. Sorry. KK, thanks. Uh, YW, you're welcome. Um, I logged out of that for you, but you will not be allowed to have any devices tomorrow before work unless you manage... Unless you manage to get everything done, I assign to M standards, which will not be easy. I'm not sure what part of Timothy going nowhere but the bathroom without being watched closely, but he stole a bunch more of the Easter basket today and hid the wrappers behind the washer and dryer because he obviously wasn't washed as he should have been. Clearly, she is in control of Paul. He's not allowed to have his devices unless he does what she wants to her standards. Okay, so at that, so at this point on May 9th, you're saying that Timothy needs to be watched if he goes everywhere except for the bathroom, right? He needs to be watched, yes, sir. For committing the crime of what? Uh, we had a combined Easter basket that year, and so I had divvied it out between everybody, and he stole some that was Gabriel uh, Butz cheese, and uh, I don't know if it was Paul's or mine, but he's he'd already had his portion of it. So taking candy from an Easter basket means that, that he gets watched and can't have any privacy anywhere except the bathroom, right? Yes, sir. Okay, keep going. Um, then I, it was a star. What part of watching Timothy closely was unclear? Sheesh. Let me stop you right there. What okay. part of watching Timothy was unclear? Why was it that you believed at that point that Paul wasn't watching Timothy? I was correcting. It's the little star. I was correcting what... Um, usually, if I use the star like that, it was for um, to correct something that Siri messed up or something I messed up. I don't know, I'm not sure. I've only got these messages. I'm not sure. Okay, but but the, the part that you read there said what again? What part of watching Timothy closely was unclear? Sheesh. Okay, so you were upset at that point that Paul wasn't watching Timothy closely enough, correct? Yes, sir. And the only way you would know that Paul wasn't watching Timothy closely enough is if you were also watching Timothy closely enough, correct? I don't know at that point. I don't know. If somehow I found out about the Easter basket. This is, well, this is, hold on. Okay, yeah, this was, we must have been at a baseball game. It was 6.20 p.m., 6.43 p.m. So, yeah, I must have been watching him from... So you're at a baseball game for G, and, and you're watching Timothy and yes. Paul to make sure Paul's watching Timothy closely enough. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you remember all this text exchange? No, sir, I don't. You don't remember this at all? No. Okay, go ahead. Keep reading. Okay. Okay, there's no way that was today, Mama. Don't blame me. He that's literally... Paul, right? that's yes. Right. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's Paul, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He literally never had the opportunity to steal anything. I made sure of that. The response to that is? Uh, when he was putting clothes on my bed, he did actually... And watch, it's ye tone with me. Should have been the, not ye. Right. Um, so you knew that Timothy had done something when he was putting clothes away. Yes, right? sir. And the only way the, you would know that is by monitoring the cameras, right? Yes, sir. Um, I never gave him permission to even set foot in your room. I swear he must have done it when I went to the bathroom. Okay, keep going. He's trying to get me in trouble here, this Mom. This is all Paul, right? Yeah, this is okay. Paul. He's trying to get me in trouble, Mom. She has set up a dynamic. Paul does not want to be in Timothy's position. Paul needs to keep his status or he will suffer. And I told him to go to his room when I did. I brought him downstairs with me so his sneaky butt escaped. I watched him go into his room. And what's your response there? We uh, I said he never. He said he never asked, but I've mentioned before you need to take him downstairs when you go to the bathroom so he can't escape. All right, yes. Let me, let me just, okay. that's, I think we can stop there. You don't remember sending these text messages? No, sir. No memory from this time period? No, sir. Because of all the blackouts, all the tunnel vision, all the PTSD, right? No, sir. Okay. He said he never asked, but I've mentioned before you need to take him downstairs when you go to the bathroom so he can't escape. That was what you said, though, right? Yes, sir. 
you actually use the phrase escape in relation to your 15 year old child. Apparently, yes, sir. As if he was some prisoner. No, sir. Well, who else needs to escape but a prisoner? I'm going to draw that. May 9th, right? I, is, yeah, that's what it said. You don't remember that at all? No, sir. When was Mother's Day 2022? I don't remember, honestly. If I told you it was May 8th, would you have reason to doubt that? No, sir. Not at all. I believe Mr. Johnson was asking you, uh, and you were very eager to tell him about something that you remembered happening on sometime just after Mother's Day, right? Correct. That Timothy got on a scale and weighed 108 pounds. 104. 104 pounds. I'm sorry. I'm glad you corrected me. I wrote it down as 104 pounds, right? It's amazing your memory is that good that you can remember what your son weighed sometime after May 8th, but you can't remember talking about having him escape. Would you care to explain that to the jury? Yes, sir. That happened with the PTSD, with everything else that was going on. I would, especially when I got stressed, it would, the, the tunnel vision, and I mean, I can't, for lack of a better term, blacking out, um, it, pretty much any time my stress level went up, and it, I mean, it wasn't up that day that, that we did the weigh the dog. So you can't remember all of these text messages about the ice baths and the hot sauce and the zip ties and the handcuffs, but you remember over 18 months ago that your son weighed 108 pounds sometime after Mother's Day in 2022, correct? 104, yes. 104. You, well, you it was, got it down. You're right. He 104 made, pounds. Well, he made a, a comment that just things like that will stick out to me sometimes. And when when he couldn't pick the dog up, bear in mind, this is a service dog in training, so he's, he's used to being getting commands. And Timothy, I remember he put his hands on his hips and looked at Sharma and said, next time you get to pick me up. And the dog tilted his head like, I don't understand that command. And it just, that struck me. It sticks in my head. I don't know why, but that sticks in my head. What day was it? That sticks in her head. You know, when a police officer testified about responding to that call and seeing Timothy, you could see in his face that that call will stick in that officer's head. Many of the details of this case will stick in the heads of people who have never even met Timothy. But it's this and not the image of him suffering day after day that's sticking in her head. I don't know what day of the week it was, sir. It was during the week. But how long after Mother's Day was it then? I don't remember, sir. I know the reason I know it was after Mother's Day is because um, mom, my mother in law, for a for probably the last four or five years, as a Mother's Day gift, has given me um, cherry tomato plants and then miniature cucumber plants, and I keep them in like plant bags. Storytelling, blah, 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 I'm relatable. I kept these plants alive. Don't focus on my crimes. We're skipping ahead. But the prosecutor had to come back to which the defense objects. So here it is. Plants never missed a feeding then, did they? No objection, Your Honor, I already met her. It's argumentative about it. She's, she's proud of herself and she's plants alive. Plants never missed a feeding. But, but, Mr. Roberts, it's, it's a no relevant question. So, sustain. So your testimony is Timothy weighed 104 pounds sometime after May 9th, correct? Yes, sir. That doesn't look anything like 104 pounds, does it? No, sir. And that's not even a month. That's barely a month after May 9th, isn't it? Yes, sir. I lose weight very quickly. I'm assuming he got that from me. Is there nothing that she doesn't have a comeback for? And if his weight was so low that she winces for the jury here... Then why did she not get medical attention for him? And if he loses weight quickly, why would a mother deprive him of food? And again, the response to this was give him bread, right? If that's what the text message says, yes, sir. Mr. Johnson asked you about the uh, some text messages back and forth between you and Paul during the ice bath the last day, the day before Timothy died. Um, and you were observing that ice bath from work, right? I glanced in on it. I wasn't observing the whole time. I didn't. I couldn't. You weren't observing the entire time? Not the entire time. I glanced in on it. She had to make sure her orders were being followed. Paul would have known that he was being monitored too. And she glances in on it while she's at work. But when Paul texted her a photo of Timothy and said, we have to actually feed him, she couldn't respond properly because she was at work. Whenever you'd send a text message, you were also looking at the camera, weren't you? No, I wanted Paul to think I was. 
And Mr. Johnson asked you if you remember the text about, honestly, tell me if you think this is all fake. Remember that? Vaguely. You vaguely remember that text? Yes, sir. So you can remember the text where it, it, it tries to provide you with a defense to this, but you can't remember any of the horrible things that you did to Timothy. Is that your testimony here today? I don't have any control over what I can remember and what I don't, sir. You recall Paul's testimony yesterday about what he did in response to that photograph that he sent you and about saying we really need to feed him, Mama? I think we actually need to feed him, I believe, is the actual text. Yes, sir. I remember his testimony. And what was his testimony? That he gave him peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I guess he cooked him some eggs. That was the first time you heard about that, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And that was not his instructions, was it? No, sir, but that was fine. I had no problem with that. Well, why did you just tell him to make him some eggs in the first place, then? Because I didn't think of it. I was in the middle of something. I think we actually need to start feeding him, and the only thing you can come up with, instead of Paul thinking to give him scrambled eggs, is give him some bread. That's all you could think of. It's... I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I was in the middle of something. I wasn't... I wouldn't have thought of eggs anyway, not in the middle of the day. She knows what his point is, but she focuses in on the eggs not being the thing to think of in the middle of the day. Like, the prosecutor's idea was a stupid one or, or wrong, but let's purposely miss the point here. How did this woman keep a job? You said that you would... the, the punishments, and I guess this 3 o'clock in the morning one about not letting him sleep or he gets an ice bath, so he's got to be awake at 3 o'clock in the morning. You said that was because... He would keep you guys up in the middle of the night or wake you up in the middle of the night? Yes. If the boy is trying to go to sleep, how is he keeping them awake? Unless the punishment was delivered on a different night, in which case she'd have to lose even more sleep. For what? Revenge. If it's even true that Timothy kept them up. This is still not punishment or teaching. It's revenge. I bet you, if you look into her history, you will find other acts of revenge and some creative ones. I bet money that if she can find a way of taking revenge on Paul or this prosecutor in the future, she will do it. And she will think about it. This is who she is. Vengefulness is a threat indicator. And if she's willing to do it to her own son, who would she spare? You know who knows this about her? Paul does. He may not put it in these words, but he knows. I'm not excusing him, but I do think he was profoundly and deviously manipulated by her. And he was also a victim. Shonda is vengeful and calculating and got off on power. And again, you did really well on the logic and reason por reasoning portion of the, the LSAT exam. Can you explain the reasoning behind keeping somebody awake when they're keeping you awake? To show them how it feels. But they're already awake, aren't they? It made sense to me, sir. That's Now that you ask it, but it, it doesn't seem to make sense, but... It made sense to me at the time. You didn't actually mean that as a punishment, but that was just out of spite. You were just angry with Timothy for keeping you awake, weren't you? No, it was meant as a punishment, sir. This prosecutor is so smooth. He gets her to defend against something he's saying. And in doing so, she ends up admitting to the action she took. He knows exactly what he's doing. I wonder, while she's sitting in prison thinking about all of this, how long it will take, if ever, for her to figure out what happened here. But it's also a punishment for yourself because you have to stay awake as well, don't you? I don't sleep much anyway. But yes, sir. Or Paul has to stay awake, right? Yes, sir. Paul's an insomniac as well. Again, she just has to defend against everything. She can't handle that he's pointing out her failure in logic. So what does she do? I don't sleep much anyway, and Paul's an insomniac. So it really doesn't matter that we're up all night. Well, if it doesn't matter, what's the problem that Timothy has to be punished? She cannot handle being wrong or not smart enough. And he is playing her like a Cremona violin. Oh, it's not that she's the Cremona. It's that he's that kind of musician. You testified that you gave Paul, you gave Timothy a warm bath the night before he passed away, that last night, July 5th. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. That was the first time you told anybody connected to this case that you'd done that, isn't it? Yes, sir. You never told the police officers you did that, did you? No, sir. I imagine a warm bath sounds just like, it's just what it sounds like, right? You, you got him, you took him to the bath, you drew a warm bath for him, and you put him in the bathtub, right? Yes, sir. This is hours before he dies, right? Yes, sir. 
You look like that when you put them in the bathtub? Do we have a trash can? Yeah, I placed a trash can. You did? Yeah, I see. Alright. Would you like to hear it? Alright, please rise. I'm sorry. I think this is another show. Where was this reaction while her son suffered before her eyes? Did she vomit at the scene? The prosecutor will point out that she'd seen this picture before and she will deny it. Notice that she responds with a nod when someone asks, makes a remark about a garbage can. She's so distraught that she's tossing her cookies in public, but she's aware of everything going on around her and able to respond to somebody's remark that wasn't actually directed at her. She doesn't want to be faced with the evidence. She doesn't want to answer his question. There's no way she did not know what state Timothy was in. And this is another thing that these so-called parents do. They pretend they didn't know. And interesting how there are no tears. She's not trembling all along. She has spoken as if her abhorrent actions were normal. And she's throwing up now? Uh, before we get back to the question I originally, originally asked Ms. Van Der Ark, um, you just obviously had quite a, uh, a visual reaction there to the jury, a physical reaction in front of the jury looking at those photographs. That's not the first time you've seen these photographs, though, is it? No, sir. In fact, you sat in this very courtroom not even a week ago on Friday when we had a hearing about those photographs and looked at those photographs, didn't you? I did not look at them last week, sir. You didn't look at them last week? No, sir, I did not. But you've looked at them before, haven't you? It was, I think it was at the prelim, and I just felt, I gagged that day, too. It just mm -hmm. wasn't as bad. Didn't throw up. No, it wasn't as bad. So the first time she saw that picture, it wasn't as bad as the second time? What about up close? When she was dragging his body on a tarp across the floor, did she gag then? You, it won't be on the video, I can promise you that. Well, then I'll return to my original question. Those three photographs depict your son hours after you supposedly put him in a warm bath. Did he look like that when you put him in the warm bath, but for the fact that he was alive? I did not look at him, sir. He was 15. I tried to give him his privacy. It may sound lame, but I, I intentionally look away. That's that's why Paul did most of his baths, is because he's 15, and I didn't think that was appropriate. <laughs> If the boy needs someone else to give him a bath, then his mother bathing him is not inappropriate. If he didn't need assistance, that's different. I think Paul gave the baths because she just didn't want to be bothered. And how does she bathe him without looking at him? And let's talk about inappropriate. Did she think it was appropriate to discuss putting hot sauce on certain parts? Is that appropriate? Is torture appropriate? Give me a freaking break. She has no concept or care for what's appropriate. She's using the concept here, the word here, for the benefit of how she appears to the jury. That's all. So you didn't put him in the bathtub? No, he was already in the tub. I just did, did you get him out of the tub? Um, I don't remember. I think, I think so later that night. I would assume so. I don't remember again. She did not put him in the tub. She didn't see him because she looked away. So she couldn't have actually bathed him. She's not describing sitting in the bathroom waiting for him. And she doesn't remember taking him out. She did not give him a bath. Why are people saying she's so smart? She's smoother than some criminals. But I don't see the brilliance here. She's practiced at lying and conning and manipulating. Later that night, how long was he in the tub? Well, night to me is any time after work, so. See, she didn't answer the question. She purposely misunderstands, and she comes out with it quickly. If this boy needs someone to bathe him, why isn't she in there? How long was he in the tub? I don't, I mean, I don't think it was long after I got home, but I don't know. And again, you didn't tell the police officers this when they talked to you about what had happened the night before, did you? I, I don't remember. Apparently, I didn't. Well, so you don't remember what you told the police officers? 
I remember part of it, but I mean, I'm, I, if you say I didn't tell them, then I'm, I trust your word there. If you told the police officers that you noticed he was skinny, so you made him some bread and put some butter on it and watched him eat three quarters of it and then sent him to bed, is that, does that refresh your recollection about what you told the officers? I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't remember saying it, but... Oh, for Pete's sake. Lady, it doesn't matter that you don't remember what you said to the police because it doesn't absolve you of anything. So you don't remember saying those things to the police officer? No, sir. And those things clearly didn't happen, did they? No, sir. How did he get into his room that night? I don't remember, sir. Last page of text messages. You can go ahead and read that very top text message, please. Please set your alarm for 6 a.m. I ended up dragging him back to a small room because I wasn't going to risk him having access to the tub or other things overnight. He's still trying to be stupid, but I will tell you more tomorrow while I take you to work, describing how many different ways I proved that he's still faking. He's still doing it, though. It's beyond ridiculous. I ended up dragging him back to his small room because I wasn't going to risk him having access to the tub or other things overnight. plan was for him to sleep in the bathroom, wasn't it? I don't remember, sir. I mean, I know that it's in the text message, but it, that's what the text message says. Okay. And you had to drag him back to the small room. Again, the small room being the closet, right? Yes, sir. Supposedly that he wanted to sleep in. Yes, sir. But you had to drag him there. Why was that? Well, dragging, I mean, that could be anywhere from grabbing hold of an arm and because someone's not being cooperative. That's... Physically dragging him by the arm is bad, too. She talks like it's okay. That can, that can be a range of things, sir, so I don't know what I was referring to there. You've seen the video, haven't you? No, sir. I haven't seen any videos. Do you need your, do you need your memory refreshed about him getting back in the small room that night? No, sir. I mean, like I said, I'll take the... I just I don't remember actually doing it. Did you physically pull him into the room that night? Yes, sir. I mean... And did you set? Did you push him down onto the ground so that he was laying and facing the camera? If that's what it shows, then yes, sir. And did you put, position his face towards the camera? If that's what it shows, I. And did you tell him that he owes you the biggest apology on the face of the earth, and then maybe he can get out to go to the bathroom? If that's what it shows, sir, I, I don't remember. And did you return a little while later because he had rolled over away from the camera so that you couldn't see him on camera? If that's what it shows, I don't remember any of this. She wanted to look at his face. This woman is sadistic. And, broken record, not remembering doesn't mean it didn't happen. She has not offered a defense of not criminally responsible. That's not this. And did you tell him you don't need to open your mouth every time you breathe, dummy, and then hold his mouth shut? I don't know what I said, sir. I mean... I'll take your word for that's what the video Oh, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's play the video for it. She held his mouth shut. She focuses on not remembering what she said. She held his mouth shut. Sir, that's not necessary. That's what you're saying it shows. I believe you. I'm not. So you're acknowledging that the night before Timothy died, hours before he died, you dragged him, looking like that, back into a small room, positioned him in front of a camera, Told him he owed you an apology. Then came back later because he rolled over away from the camera and held his mouth closed and said, said, see, you don't have to open your mouth when you breathe, dummy. You're acknowledging you did those things. That's what the camera shows, yes, sir. She does not want to face that video. She does not want to face people seeing what she did, what she is. She is not ashamed of what she did to that boy. It's what she sees mirrored in the eyes of others that she can't handle. It's all about her. You didn't put him in a warm bath that night, did you? Yes, sir, I did. But you have to drag him away from it? If that's what it says, I don't... I know that he... I I know he had a hoodie on. You said the locks on the refrigerator were there because he got into the refrigerator, and if I heard your testimony correctly, he ate... A pound of frozen hamburger? Yes, sir. That was back. And a bag of chicken nuggets? A frozen bag of chicken nuggets, yes, sir. And and frozen hamburger? Yes, sir. The hamburger was not frozen. It was refrigerated. But frozen chicken nuggets? Frozen chicken nuggets and raw bacon. And raw bacon? Yes, sir. Frozen raw bacon? No, it was in the refrigerator. The frozen stuff was the chicken nuggets. The chicken chicken nuggets, that was the only frozen, yes, sir. Did you think he had an affinity for frozen food? I, I didn't know the frozen. The only thing he ate frozen was the chicken nuggets. 
Is that why you sent a text message to Paul while he was in the ice bath at 3.43 that afternoon and said, oh, okay, crazy thought. Tell him if he actually sits up by himself and stays sitting up, he will get some pizza rolls. Don't tell him it's only two, and I'm okay if they are frozen rather than cooked. Why did you send that text message? I don't know. Don't remember that either? No, sir. So you're not worried about him eating frozen pizza rolls if he sits up? That's what it says. You've heard it read several times. Yes, You're not sir. doubting that's what it says, right? Yes, sir. Just another one of those memories that you just just gone from your head, right? Yes, sir. So when you told Detective Peasky that the reason the locks were on the refrigerator is because he would he would get into them and he'd leave the doors open, that was that was a lie, wasn't it? No, that was also true. He did that as well. How does putting locks on fix that problem? He can't get into it then, so it doesn't get left open. Oh, no, so, he was, so you admit that he was not allowed access to the refrigerator or the freezer or to the pantry. As far as and the refrigerator and freezer, after we put the locks on. He couldn't get into them, could he? No, not after that. And the pantry had an alarm on it as well, didn't it? No, it didn't. You told Detective Pieski that long, long after the stroke happened in January, Timothy went on a hunger strike. That was a lie, wasn't it? Not long after. And no, that was not a lie. That was the truth. He went on a hunger strike. Yes, sir, he did. It, was, it wasn't immediately, but it was within a few days. And uh, a hunger strike is... Refusing to eat, right? Yes, sir. So he's refusing to eat food not long after your husband has a stroke, right? Yes, sir. Then you don't need to put locks on the refrigerator and the freezer, do you? If he's refusing to eat. He, he stopped. He, he actually he started eating again. I think that it was after the stroke that she started starving him. There was no one there to question her evil. And if he'd started eating again, then how did he starve to death? She just pulls out an excuse from her giant sack of excuses for whatever that moment calls for and expects everybody will forget everything she said before. You'd think she'd know that that's not how it works in court. He started eating again, so then you decided he's been on a hunger strike, he's eating again, so now we better lock up the food. No, I did the, the locks to protect him because he could have he killed himself eating the chicken nuggets. <laughs> I didn't put the locks on after he did the hamburger or the bacon, but the chicken nuggets, he, it was raw chicken. This upset and worry is not upset and worry for her son. It's just a good time for her to release the pent-up tension that she's been feeling. I could list all the reasons why she's full of crap, but I, I think you already know. Chicken nuggets are cooked, aren't they? They're pretty cooked. Are they? I didn't even think about that. But it's okay if he has a frozen pizza roll or two, if he sits up, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. February 18th, 2022. Find out what he has snuck right the heck now. Because I know he has snuck all stuff since you weren't doing what you were supposed to. What do you mean you didn't know he was awake? You both should have been awake at 10.30. I am not happy. You know he wasn't just sitting there. Check the brownies in the kitchen. Check everything not locked away. Check where the flipping keys have been. So starting February, you had to lock up all the food. Make sure he's not getting into the brownies, right? And all of the food was never locked. We had it. There's no pictures of it, but one of the, the lower cupboards had um, quite a bit of canned food in it. He starved to death. But all of the food wasn't locked up. that That's where she wants you to go. And let me tell you about the canned food. And ignore that the prosecutor just read a text that said, go check all the food not locked up to see if he got into any of that. So he was not allowed food. And note she's letting Paul know she's not happy. He hasn't done his job well enough. Her standards. We know that she is vengeful and sadistic. Paul knows better than all of us what she's capable of. And that's just punishment. Never mind every child's need, even when they're older, for their parents to love them. That's not a free pass for Paul, but it's not as cut and dry as some people want it to be. And he actually would get into that and eat stuff out of cans as well. But there was never there was never a lock on that lower cupboard. I don't know if they. So I, I know they took pictures of it because I showed it to them. So he had access to one cupboard of food. Um, the pantry wasn't locked it, it, the whole time. I know that. So the, there were times the pantry was locked or had an alarm on it, wasn't there? It, it, there was no alarm. I never got one for the pantry. I don't. 
I mean, I've heard the text messages. I don't remember there being a lock on the pantry, but I've heard them. The lock wasn't there for the whole time. Ah, so you starved him for a shorter period of time. And so that's okay then. And there was no lock on the pantry, but I've heard the text messages. As, as if the text messages were some independent entity, not her words. 228, check his breath. I can almost guarantee he's eaten something. He was chewing on something when he walked downstairs. You and I will be talking about this on a later date when we're both home. Paul's response, yes, he grabbed some chips. I know. So he wasn't allowed to eat chips on 228 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Couldn't have some chips. Right? I mean, it's, I, I don't know what happened in that situation. I, Before you didn't say, make sure he didn't get into the frozen chicken nuggets because it might kill him. You said, find out what he's been into, and Paul says he's been into chips. Right? That's what it says, yes, sir. So I imagine the next text message then is, oh, great, that's fine, he can have some chips. Well, no, the point of it was he was sneaking things. He knew better. Couldn't have chips. It wasn't that he couldn't have chips. It was that he would sneak things. It so was how dishonest. He, how, would, how would he earn getting chips? He didn't have to earn them. All he had to do was ask. I was trying to teach him not to sneak. He snuck. It wasn't just food. He would sneak in the garage. He would sneak toys. So he wasn't allowed toys either? He, he um, snuck around and messed with his, his baby brother's homeschooling materials. I've got like flashcards and stuff for him. He messed with those and got them all out of order. He messed up some papers. Even in trying to vilify him, she can't come up with anything horrible that he did. March 4th is around the time that you that, that you acknowledged that he was in zip cuffs. You, 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 we talked about that a little bit earlier, but I don't think we clarified your final text message where you said, you know what? We will start cutting off the ends once they are tight, so he can't do that. Is that one of the can't remember texts, too? Yes, sir. March 19th. Okay, that only makes partial sense. What did he grab? LOL. Paul's response, I don't know, chips or something small he had in his pocket. Okay, let me just re restart it. Is not eating again. Clear, intentional, systematic starvation. When she is in prison, they will feed her every day. That was you. March 19th. Tell him he's just restarted, is not eating again. So he took chips. So the punishment for that is now he's not allowed to eat anything again, right? It does, I don't remember, sir. Don't remember that one. Okay. Talking about the punishment outside, um, Paul says, wall sits question mark, and they say, push him until it looks like he is about to fall over, please. That was for running up and down the stairs, wasn't it, on April 14th? On top of the intentional starvation, she's having him burn calories. This looks like she's trying to kill him. That's what it says. Yes. So you wanted Paul to run him up and down the stairs until he was ready to fall over. That's what the text says. What, was, what crime had he committed to warrant being physically driven until you fall over? I have no idea, sir. I have an idea. There was none. He hadn't done anything to warrant this. His behavior wasn't the motive at all. Just an excuse. Just what she used for her justification. The crime wasn't his. It was hers. April 18th. He managed to come upstairs, yank the locks off of both the freezer and the pantry without you noticing, and he stole a bunch of crap that squished and rattled and did all sorts of stuff, and you slept through everything. KK, no devices until tomorrow. At least my lunch, other than messaging, until at least my lunch, other than messaging me, which would be very little. Remember that? I don't remember it, no, sir. Of course she pretends not to remember. The prosecutor is just rolling along. He knows how she's going to be, and he's going to get the evidence in front of the jury in spite of her little game. And again, we're hearing about Paul having his devices taken away because Timothy got food. So, but if the text message said he yanked the locks off the pantry, then there were locks on the pantry as of April 18th, right? Apparently. 426, almost freaking caught him again. I want all the food in the fridge, freezer, or pantry, and those locked. We're locking up all the food again on April 26th, correct? Well, the cupboard still was never locked. She's like a 13-year-old. And what was in the cupboard? Um, canned, a bunch of canned stuff. There's a bunch of cans in there. A bunch of cans in there? So you're okay with him getting into a bunch of canned stuff? I mean, he got into it all the time. That's not what he asked. He asked if you were okay with it. So, so what, do you go to the drawer, get a can opener, open up the can, put it on the stove, warm the stuff up? No, he didn't. He, just, he would eat it straight out of the can. Well, that is weird. Worry. Huh? That didn't worry you? Well, when I discovered it, it did, but I just never put anything on that cupboard. 
She just said there was a lot of canned food. And now she's saying she never put anything in that cupboard. Her need to be right and not to be challenged is so extreme, she'll shoot herself in the foot rather than let anyone think less of her. So what what caused this almost freaking cotton I want all the food in the fridge and the freezer of the pantry that was locked up April 28th? I have no idea, sir. Without having it in there, I don't know what caused it. It's likely related to the text before that, isn't it? I don't know. He keeps pulling his arms down, and that doesn't set off the camera alarm, so please watch him for that. Well, why did he have his arms up? He was standing against the wall with his arms on his head. Being made to hold their arms up was something done to prisoners of war. So we'd have to do that for long periods of time, right? Stand there, but he didn't have to have his arms up the whole time, but I'd set a time limit on how long he had to have his arms up. This is a form of torture. And in the face of evidence, her own words, showing he had to hold his arms up and Paul was to enforce that. She now says, well, not all the time. Like, that makes it okay. And you're you're either, you're watching or watching an alarm to make sure his arm doesn't go down, right? From the sound of it. Even though I know she's going to do this, it's still maddening. I bet you she knows it bothers people. I bet you she likes it. The uh, response to you about locking, from Paul, about locking up the food, it's just he pulled the pantry door lock. What do you mean he just pulled it? Did he take it off? Paul says, yes, that part that attaches to the wall is dangling right now due to sticky locks. Okay, get another one on it right away. Last I saw, they were on the floor in a bag in my room. And you need to make him run up and down the stairs a ton for that, even in the cold and rain. So trying to take some food, not in his cabinet full of canned goods, and pulling, a, pulling the alarm, the pantry lock off, means he doesn't get food, it all gets locked away, and he has to run the stairs, even in the cold and rain, right? And being deceitful and sneaky. He was trying to survive, literally, and she made sure that he lost. And the fact that she still feels justified, and is still vilifying and blaming him, is still speaking of him with contempt, that tells you everything. He was deceitful and sneaky a lot, wasn't he? Yes, sir, he was. Did I ever hurt him because he was hungry? He was that way a lot, well before there was issues, well before the stroke. I mean, he, we always had issues with him over that, but his, that his stepmom warned me about that. Well before there were, you said well before the issues. What, what, what issues? Before his first hunger strike... Before any of this, he was extremely sneaky. Did it ever occur to you that this is not the way to deal with a person who's been on a hunger strike? Locking up their food, locking up their access to food, punishing them when they, when they try to take food? Did, did, did that ever occur to you with your, your brilliant legal mind, as it was, that that wasn't a good idea? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. The distress you're seeing here is just frustration and the pressure build up. It's not sadness or remorse. April 27th, Timothy is no longer allowed anywhere near the fridge, freezer, or pantry, or any other place where food is. So now it sounds like he can't even get into his cabinet full of canned goods, right? I mean, that's what I said. We never put it, there was never a lock on that. No. She just stopped putting food in there and had him watched more closely than a hawk watches a field mouse. But he wasn't allowed near it. I mean, right. If that's what it says, I don't. That was that was April twenty seventh, just a few days before. Somehow he manages to be one hundred and four pounds, which, as we've heard from the testimony this morning, is still a good thirty pounds under average weight, right? Um. Well, my my kids are most of them are slim. Paul is six one inch and one hundred thirty. He doesn't even hit the one hundred thirty four for a five eight person. Blah 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 blah. If your kid is already underweight, you don't deprive him of food. And I lose weight extremely easily, so. Hit the, he, at 104, he looked average. He's 30 pounds underweight, but he looked average. And he didn't look average at the end. He was emaciated. Police officers said they could see his bones. This boy was a prisoner of war. The war was in his own home. And the warmonger was his own mother. And he was innocent. February 14th, I may need some help with it, but I am about to get a lock to the pantry door and a lock for the fridge in both freezers. And then we won't leave any food out of those areas, and he won't have access to unlock those. Okay, Paul's response. Your response, if you disagree, please say so, but he is not going to win this. So you were bound and determined that he wasn't going to win and get food without asking for permission first, weren't you? Even no, if that meant locking up all the food. 
No, sir. I was bound and determined he would stop being deceitful and sneaky. Who has been deceitful? Who has been devious? Who has been cruel and calculating? Shonda. And we're back to vilifying the child, blaming the victim. Even if he had done all kinds of horrible things, none of it would justify any of this. She's acting like a defiant, snarky 13-year-old here. It wasn't about him. It was about her and about her winning and about getting revenge and about enjoying her power. He is not going to win this. Because he was being stubborn. He kept sneaking. He snuck stuff. We found out, actually, it was well before the stroke. Um, Paul discovered it. This was before his first hunger strike. And again, your response to all of this, rather than to seek some professional help for him, because of these eating issues that he apparently has, is to restrict even further his access to food, right? And then watch his every move on a camera or with a motion sensor or with an alarm, right? My response was to try to, to prevent him from being deceitful and sneaky. April 28th, do you want to have just the one on the pants for tonight? When I leave, you will have to have both of them on so it doesn't get away with anything. So by April 28th, you were putting multiple alarms on his person, weren't you? If that's what it says, I didn't realize he even owed more than one. I only remember ordering one. She purposely misses the point and says, I only ordered one. Like, that somehow makes it okay? And you're supposed to argue about whether or not it was one or three or five until there's something else that she doesn't want to deal with. And then the argument will get redirected again. And she never, ever deals with the original problem. But this prosecutor is not playing that game. Okay, take off the arm one, but warn him that I will count how many times he moves his arm from the camera picking it up, and he'll be doing stairs for that tomorrow. That's at 11 o'clock in the evening on 428. So you're watching to see how many times he moved his arm when he was in his room? How many times he dropped his arm? Was he in his room? I don't know. You tell me. I wasn't there. All I can do is read you the text message. It says, okay, take off the arm one, referencing back to the alarms, but warn him that I will count how many times he moves his arm from the camera, picking it up, and he will be doing stairs for that tomorrow. That he's, he's not sneaking around there, is he? No, he was up against the wall, and he was supposed to have his arms on his head for a certain amount of time. Okay, so at 11 o'clock at night, Sometimes. he's supposed to be up against the wall, and you want to make sure that it, it, he knows you're going to know how many times he moves his arm, and if it's not satisfactory, he gets to do stairs for that the next day. Yes, sir, apparently. April 29th. What did he eat? I ate my burger already. Paul's response. He ate the crust. Do you remember what your response was? I don't remember. I heard it the other day, but I don't remember sending that. Go try to make him throw up, please. As if the rest of it wasn't enough. There is no getting around intent here. She's going to make sure he didn't get the few calories and what little nutrition his body could get out of a crust of bun. That was your response, wasn't it? If that's what it says. Don't remember? No, you put that one in the don't remember category? Like I said, I did. unfortunately, between January and the time he passed away, I don't have a lot of memories in general. I don't care about your self-serving tears. This is poor Shonda, but not a tear for Timothy. Nothing. For Timothy. May 5th, did Timothy work hard enough to sleep tonight so you and I can both get some sleep? He will still have to work super hard tomorrow to earn the same, but wanted to ask about tonight first. Do you want to explain how that falls in with your statement that the reason he wasn't allowed to sleep was because he would keep you guys awake? I actually do remember that. Timothy asked if he could trade off um, not getting to sleep for something else, and I had him doing chores. A lot to unpack in that sentence, so I think I'll just start at the end. So he had to ask for permission to sleep. No, right? this was just, this was because he had kept us up. Like I said before, he had kept us up, so he wasn't going to get to sleep. And he asked if, if he could trade that punishment for another punishment. He kept up the insomniacs. The exchange that follows is more of the same nonsense, so I'm skipping it. May 16th, where is Timothy? Paul's response, sorry, I was getting dressed. Timothy is on a five-minute bathroom timer. Well, four now. And your response, why is he on a five-minute timer? He doesn't get five minutes. He gets 60 seconds unless he needs to poop, then he gets two minutes. You only got to go to the bathroom for one minute or two minutes, depending on what he had to do? I don't remember. I didn't, I don't remember ever enforcing that, but obviously I sent it. Well, I, I want my question answered. Is it cruel 
to make a child go on go to the bathroom on a timer. Yes, sir. This goes on and on, and she keeps answering the same. In the next clip, they're talking about a time when Timothy ate pancake powder. That could make him sick, the dummy. Do you always refer to him as a dummy when you're worried about him? No, sir. You can look at the text messages. I hardly ever said anything like that. Hardly ever said anything like that? It's, it's not a good idea to call a child a dummy, is it? I never would to him. I was frustrated, like I said. <coughs> Did she forget the court already knows she held his mouth shut and called him a dummy? Later on in that same text exchange, Paul says he also crapped himself. And the response is, what? In his pants? Seriously? Paul, I told him to take a five-minute shower. Make him do the work in the garage with nothing on below the waist. Just make sure the garage door stays closed. And then he can stand down against the wall with nothing on below the waist until you leave. Just please make sure G does not go downstairs at all while he's standing there like that. Break that up again. So make him do the work in the garage with nothing on below the waist. So his punishment for having an accident was that he had to do chores without pants and underwear on, right? If that's what it says, I don't remember this. That's pretty humiliating, isn't it? I mean, he was by himself. It wasn't, I would never, I mean, I don't remember this at all, sir. If she doesn't remember, how can she state that he was by himself? And she avoided the question about it being humiliating. You don't, you don't remember that at all. No, uh, but you, you did have the presence of mind at that time that says, just make sure the garage door stays closed because you don't want anyone seeing him doing that, do you? Well, I, I didn't want the garage door open ever because we had a lot of stuff out there. Name that tactic. Purposely missing the point, redirection, arguing about something else. So. His clothes need to be washed right away, but he gets to be without anything below the waist for a while today. Did he see? Did he say why the heck he did that? And Paul's response is, he didn't. He said he didn't want to disturb anyone. He had to ask for permission to go to the bathroom, didn't he? No, sir, not usually. If he was on the wall, he did, because he was supposed to be standing still. So let's get back to your statement to Officer, or excuse me, to Detective Pesky. I mean, you, did, you didn't tell the detective about the warm bath, um, but you told him that you realized how skinny he was the night before and threatened to take him to the ER if he didn't eat. That's not true, is it? No, sir. You didn't make him a piece of toast and give it to him and make him eat it, did you? No, sir. I have no idea why I said that. I was I was traumatized. I actually didn't come out of the first month I was in jail. I, it was... I wish uh, the Lydia that used to work for the public defender's office visited me, and she, she said it was, it was pretty obvious that I was under severe trauma. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat for my first month. Now we see tears. No tears for Timothy. Tears for herself. This was this was while the, they were searching your house on July 6th, while you were sitting in your house? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking, ooh, well, I better, better tell him, yeah, he looked a little skinny last night, and I thought I should take him to the ER, and then make some toast with butter on it and watch them eat it, and he walked away. None of that happened, did it? No, I don't, I don't even remember that. But you had the presence of mind to lie to the officer at the time when he was investigating. Like I said, I was traumatized. I don't know. I don't remember this, sir. Um, he wouldn't come upstairs when she said goodnight. She walked down to the last couple of stairs and asked for a hug and a kiss. That didn't happen either, did it? I don't remember. I mean, I would assume not, but I don't remember. In fact, you're acknowledging that the, that video that shows you dragging him into a small room, looking like he does when he dies, calling him a dummy for breathing with his mouth open, is actually what you did to him the night before he died, right? If that's what it shows, I don't remember, sir. Where's the shame? Your statement to Detective PC continues. She got ready for work in the morning and went to check on him. She said his name, but he did not respond. She put her hand on his chest and he was not breathing. She remembered her 20-year-old son, Paul, helping her get him off the bed. That was all a lie, wasn't it? Yes, sir. You know where he was when you found him that morning, right? In, in the closet. In, in the small room. room. And er, prior to that, you told Officer Stephanie, well, it was about 5.30, he fell out of bed, and I had to go and put him back into bed. Also a lie, right? Yes, sir. I have no idea why I said that, sir. Like I said, I was traumatized. No, honey. You were afraid of getting caught. And yes, you do know why you said it. You said it to avoid responsibility, just like what you're trying to do now. You told Detective Pisky that Timothy started a stated he was on a hunger strike two weeks ago. This is two weeks before he dies. He goes on a hunger strike. Yes, sir. Did he go on a hunger strike? Yes, sir, he did. He's on a hunger strike, but he's stealing food? Okay. It takes more than two weeks to starve to death. And that doesn't explain the hypothermia or the leg shackles or hot sauce or prisoner of war torture or the isolation or... 
told the officer that there was an alarm on the basement door. That, that this is the closet. This is the small closet because there was some sewing stuff stored in it. That was a lie, wasn't it? Yes, sir. There was sewing stuff stored in it before he asked to do that, but, but the alarm I don't know why I told him that. The alarm wasn't on there because there was sewing stuff on it, was there? No, sir. The alarm was on it because Paul, because Timothy was supposed to be in there, right? I mean, as far as I know, like I said, I don't. She is so practiced at lying that even in the hours after losing her son, she is able to come out with the lies and excuses. The prosecutor then goes through her many lies to police. But you know, according to her, it was Timothy who was deceitful. And then there's this doozy. But you would restrict his movement with shackles, wouldn't you? Whether it was zip ties or handcuffs or leg shackles. I mean, I can only go by based on the text messages. I don't know. Why did you wait 20 minutes to call 911 after you found Timothy deceased in the small closet in the small room? I have no idea, honestly. I did. I had. I learned of that gap, what, just a couple of days ago? I, it's the whole, I mean, the whole day is surreal to me, so I, I have no idea why we waited like that. I don't know. I can't imagine waiting, but apparently it happened. I don't know. Do you remember Paul asking you, should we call 911? I don't remember him ever asking. I, I don't, I mean... Because I was the one that called, and I was the one, I, I, he, I remember performing CPR, and he did help me out a little bit when I got tired to take over a little bit, but, I mean, I can't imagine ever saying no to that. I, but if it's on the video, that's what you said, right? If it's on there. So if the video showed that it begins with you, with movement outside of the room at about 6.19.21, 911 is actually called... You say you tell Paul you have to call at six thirty-seven, so about that's about eighteen minutes, isn't it? I mean, I'll, let's see, nineteen. Yeah, that's eighteen minutes. And Timothy was never responsive to you, was he? No, sir. His eyes were com- wide open, completely glazed over, weren't they? As far as I remember, yes, sir. How does she not remember? How is that not burned into her brain? Victims talk about this. They talk about wishing they hadn't looked wishing you know having to identify somebody and having that be the image that's stuck in their head and every time they close their eyes that's what they see it's seared into your brain and and you know who else is going to remember what timothy looked like the officers who showed up at that scene that image of that boy will be seared into their brains and she doesn't remember come on she was so traumatized that she dragged her son's body on a tarp out of the closet where he had been confined. So traumatized that she figured out how to stage the scene and figured out what lies that she needed to tell and that she needed to get her other son to tell. While this is all going on, you tell Paul, we'll have to tell them he was on a hunger strike. Right? You remember telling him that? No, I don't. Don't remember that either? No, sir. Do you remember telling Paul, or do you remember saying, put his pants on to make it look like he's been this way? I don't remember saying that. Do you remember asking Paul to put the belt on to make it sure that that's the way he looked? No, sir. But if they're on video, you said those things, yes, right? Yes, sir. After this, she decided not to come back to court. Oh, she says, oh, it was a medical issue. She didn't come back to court for the rest of the trial. She did not have to answer to the jury. She escaped that. Her son could not. She made Timothy face the camera even while he was sleeping so that she could see his face while he suffered. She forced him to face her and she could not face the jury. She is going to be sentenced in January and the law is that she is required to be there. She should have to face the court. She should have to face the camera to hear her verdict. And what do you want to bet that on the day or just before sentencing, she will come down with some mystery illness that will mean that she she can't go and face the court and face the public. And this stuff that you've witnessed in this trial, maybe not to this extent, but it's happening in every kind of neighborhood all over the place. It's not just those people over there. With all our advances and everything that we know, we still fail to stop this. We still break 
the most important members of our society. I want to ask you for something. If you see something, if you suspect, if you question that maybe a child you know or a child you saw is in trouble, please say something. If you're wrong, you're wrong. But no child should be alone like that. I'll leave it here. I'm going to go play with Watson. I hope you go do something life-affirming. Hug your kids. Talk to someone you love. Go outside. Breathe in the fresh air. Support child welfare agencies. Support laws that help kids. And take care of yourself. I'll see you in the comments.